December 10th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Amos chapters 5 and 6 from the Old Testament. Listen to this funeral song I am ready to sing about you, family of Israel. The virgin Israel has fallen down and will not get up again. She is abandoned on her own land with no one to help her get up. The Sovereign Lord says this, The city that marches out with a thousand soldiers will have only a hundred left. The town that marches out with a hundred soldiers will have only ten left for the family of Israel. The Lord says this to the family of Israel. Seek me so you can live. Do not seek Bethel. Do not visit Gilgal. Do not journey down to Beersheba. For the people of Gilgal will certainly be carried into exile, and Bethel will become a place where disaster abounds. Seek the Lord so you can live. Otherwise he will break out like fire against Joseph's family. The fire will consume and no one will be able to quench it and save Bethel. The Israelites turn justice into bitterness. They throw what is fair and right to the ground. But there is one who made the constellations Pleiades and Orion. He can turn the darkness into morning and daylight into night. He summons the water of the seas and pours it out on the earth's surface. The Lord is his name. He flashes destruction down upon the strong, so that destruction overwhelms the fortified places. The Israelites hate anyone who arbitrates at the city gate. They despise anyone who speaks honestly. Therefore, because you make the poor pay taxes on their crops and exact a grain tax from them, you will not live in the houses you built with chiseled stone, nor will you drink the wine from the fine vineyards you planted. Certainly I am aware of your many rebellious acts and your numerous sins. You torment the innocent, you take bribes, and you deny justice to the needy at the city gate. For this reason, whoever is smart keeps quiet in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek God and not evil so you can live. Then the Lord, the God who commands armies, just might be with you, as you claim he is. Hate what is wrong, love what is right. Promote justice at the city gate. Maybe the Lord, the God who commands armies, will have mercy on those who are left from Joseph. Because of Israel's sins, this is what the Lord, the God who commands armies, the Sovereign One, says. In all the squares there will be wailing. In all the streets they will mourn the dead. They will tell the field workers to lament and the professional mourners to wail. In all the vineyards there will be wailing, for I will pass through your midst, says the Lord. Woe to those who wish for the day of the Lord. Why do you want the Lord's day of judgment to come? It will bring darkness, not light. Disaster will be inescapable, as if a man ran from a lion only to meet a bear, then escaped into a house, leaned his hand against the wall, and was bitten by a poisonous snake. Don't you realize the Lord's day of judgment will bring darkness, not light, gloomy blackness, not bright light? I absolutely despise your festivals. I get no pleasure from your religious assemblies. Even if you offer me burnt and grain offerings, I will not be satisfied. I will not look with favor on your peace offerings of fattened calves. Take away from me your noisy songs. I don't want to hear the music of your stringed instruments. Justice must flow like torrents of water, righteous actions like a stream that never dries up. You did not bring me sacrifices and grain offerings during the 40 years you spent in the wilderness family of Israel. You will pick up your images of Sikath, your king, and Kayun, your star god, which you made for yourselves. And I will drive you into exile beyond Damascus, says the Lord. He is called the God who commands armies. Woe to those who live in ease in Zion. To those who feel secure on Mount Samaria, they think of themselves as the elite class of the best nation. The family of Israel looks to them for leadership. They say to the people, journey over to Kalna and look at it. Then go from there to Hamath Reba. Then go down to Gath at the Philistines. Are they superior to our two kingdoms? Is their territory larger than yours? 
You refuse to believe a day of disaster will come, but you establish a reign of violence. They lie around on beds decorated with ivory and sprawl out on their couches. They eat lambs from the flock and calves from the middle of the pen. They sing to the tune of stringed instruments like David. They invent musical instruments. They drink wine from sacrificial bowls and pour the very best oils on themselves. Yet they are not concerned over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they will now be the first to go into exile, and the religious banquets where they sprawl on couches will end. The Sovereign Lord confirms this oath by his very own life. The Lord, the God who commands armies, is speaking. I despise Jacob's arrogance. I hate their fortresses. I will hand over to their enemies the city of Samaria and everything in it. If ten men are left in one house, they too will die. When their close relatives, the ones who will burn the corpses, pick up their bodies to remove the bones from the house, they will say to anyone who is in the inner rooms of the house, Is anyone else with you? He will respond, Be quiet, don't invoke the Lord's name. Indeed, look, the Lord is giving the command. He will smash the large house to bits and the small house into little pieces. Can horses run on rocky cliffs? Can one plow the sea with oxen? Yet you have turned justice into a poisonous plant, and the fruit of righteousness actions into a bitter plant. You are happy because you conquered Lodabar. You say, did we not conquer Carnaim by our own power? Look, I'm about to bring a nation against you, family of Israel. The Lord, the God who commands armies, is speaking. They will oppress you all the way from Lebo Hamath to the stream of the Arabah. God, the other day in neighborhood group from church, the one of the questions we were asked is, what do we prepare our hearts for uh, with Christmas coming up here in a few weeks? And everybody went, went around and said different things. That they listen to Christmas carols and they read certain things and putting up lights does it for them or, you know, various things uh, made the birth of your son seem vivid. I'll use that word. Then they got to me and I really struggled with answering this question. Not that I don't think of the birth of your son. I think of it a lot. But I'm not... Uh, how do I put this? I'm not a big fan of Christmas itself. Christmas is kind of like these holidays, pagan celebrations that, that Amos is talking about. I mean, that's where Christmas came from. It was a pagan holiday and it was a horrid pagan holiday. It wasn't just like a day off from work. It was a little over a week long festival uh, by pagans, Roman pagans. Um, and literally that entire time they could do anything that they wanted and not be held accountable for. <laughs> anything. Uh, rape, murder, there were sacrifices that happened. Part of the festivities included on December 25th that they would murder an innocent man or woman and they believed by doing that towards the end of the festival that, or at the end of the festival, uh, that they were destroying the forces of darkness. <laughs> by killing somebody else uh, and I don't really want to get into the other details because it's just disgusting but in the fourth century uh, the, the Christians at the time had this marketing idea I don't know how else to put it that if they were to import that festival that potentially they could take along with them the masses the pagan masses and uh, convert them and they actually converted a large number of them surprisingly um, but in agreeing to convert to christianity the pagans made them promise that they can continue to celebrate this horrid holiday so for a week again doing literally anything they want with no repercussions we even see sadly the roman catholic church becoming involved in in this festival not in the Christmas way that we know of it or the reason we said it um, but in the uh, carnival festivity way where they would actually release naked Jews to run around and they could laugh at them and do all sorts of 
garish things during this festival. But in order to make this festival somehow connected to Christianity, they said, well, we'll make it the, the birth of Jesus Christ, and then, and then it can be a, a religious holiday. So therein lies my problem with this, God. Um, all the reasons that the people are getting fussed at in these couple chapters of Amos were for pagan-type rituals, or even rituals that were from the Torah, but they were, weren't doing it with the right heart. And, and I know that most Christians celebrate Christmas. I'm hoping most Christians celebrate Christmas without any, any other thought process that is going on there. Uh, but what I said in neighborhood group, and I hope people understood what I said, but it's not a holiday for me. It's not a time to intentionally think of the birth of your son that birth of your son is very clear and very present to me throughout my entire life throughout the entire year because everything points to Jesus everything in the Bible points to Jesus everything in my life points to Jesus everything points to your son so so how could I, I not have this celebration inside of me all year long and not just December 25th and, and I don't mean it in a way that of being self-righteous quite the opposite I'm incredibly humble by being completely aware that your son left heaven and chose to come down here and live here on earth amongst us and not only do that he chose to not come as him he chose to come as a human and give up all of that that he had with you up in heaven to right there that's baffling to me but then he went through his life as a human being a perfect life uh, but he was tempted by all the things that were tempted by and then his life ended with a horrid death for me and for everyone else li listening on this video and for people around the world taking on our sins so that we could receive forgiveness for those sins so we could receive freedom and we could receive eternal life H how could I not <laughs> think about the birth of your son constantly so I guess I'm a little bit odd as a Christian I'm not a big fan of Christmas with quotation marks around it I am a huge fan of the birth of your son uh, I I have been known to sing Christmas carols all year long <laughs> not because they're Christmas but because they have to do with how crazy awesome and amazing you are but in this reading from Amos, you talk about three things which y you've had enough with. Uh, exactly what we were just talking about, these pagan religions, rituals, uh, without any understanding of the righteousness part of it. The heart wasn't the, in the right place. Um, and the second part you talk about is complacency, or through Amos, talk about complacency. And we get that way so easily, that, that kind of autopilot piece. And then the third uh, you talk about in great detail uh, is self-indulgence. Not only the people doing it, but what's going to happen to them. God, even as Christians, we get that way. I caught myself at the store today. I've been working so hard on spending your money the right way. And I was at the store and I found this cutest dish towel that had, I don't know what, a star or something silly on it. It was just really cute. And I'm like, oh my goodness, and it's 60% off. And, and I honestly went to buy it and I thought, gosh, I have so many dishcloths at home that I can use. Granted, they're not cute like this one, uh, but I have things that will work. I I'm just so used to that indulgence. What I want, I get. What I want, I buy. What I want is available to me. Uh, we, are so, we are so incredibly spoiled. God, help me to continue to work on that self-indulgence, uh, especially during these times where the entire focus, it seems like, of the Christmas holiday is on spending and spending and spending and gifting and gifting and gifting. God, I want the focus of this time to not be on pagan religions, to not be on showing up to church once, which happens to be at Christmas time, and I definitely don't want it to be about self-indulgence, overindulgence. 
God, I want this time of the year and the whole entire year to be about you, your sovereignty, the incredible sacrifice of your son, your grace, your compassion, your forgiveness of our sins, and your unending love that you have for us allowing us to grow and learn and be disciplined and discipled god i pray all this in your son's name jesus christ my lord amen <laughs>